Greetings, class, and welcome to week 11. This week, we're going to be beginning to discuss ideology. It's such a big topic, it's going to take us two weeks to cover it. So what is ideology? It's a body of connected ideas reflecting the social needs and aspirations of an individual, group, class, or culture. It's usually associated with politics or a political party, unfortunately or fortunately as it may be, and every film has an ideological perspective. So even, even if a film has no ideological perspective, that is an ideological perspective. So didacticism, this is open and obvious teaching or preaching. So it's analogous to telling, and it's a delivery of ideology, verbally, usually. And then abstraction, this means the ideological slant is almost completely obscured by the focus on aesthetic forms. It could be analogous to showing, so Maybe the ide ideological forms are in there, but they're kind of hidden, uh, and you have to pay attention to those aesthetic forms in order to actually see what the ideology is. Or they may not even be focusing on ideology at all. Classical cinema is going to avoid both extremes. So it's going to have ideology, but it's not going to have too much didacticism or too much abstraction. So the ideological spectrum, this is really just to give you an idea of where things tend to fall. And um, you'll definitely see with the movie that we watched this week that um, these things aren't absolute. And there's going to be certain things which um, cause certain ones you would think to be opposites to actually relate to each other. But if you look at it from the left to the right, things are going to be where you'd expect them to be. All the way on the left, you have communism. All the way on the right, you have fascism. And I have examples of those sorts of films. So a communist film would be Battleship Potemkin, which we've watched a, a snippet of. Uh, and then on the fascist, we have uh, Triumph of the Will, uh, the Lenny Riefenstahl film made for uh, Adolf Hitler. Um, as we move towards the center, we have some of our actual ideologies that we have in this country. Um, you have liberal on the left, conservative on the right, examples of those sorts of films. And of course, as uh, liberals tend to yell at conservatives and call them, you know, theocrats or fascists, and conservatives yell at liberals and call them socialists, um, you can see how those things relate to each other, moving slightly more to the left and slightly more to the right. So ideological expression, um, explicit versus implicit. So first of all, we'll start with neutral. And this means your social statement or ideology is going to be obscured in favor of the story. So this is common in light entertainment. So romantic comedies, some musicals, moral and social issues virtually ignored, or if they are covered, it's covered in a very light, very happy kind of way. These movies are about entertainment, and there's going to be ideology in it, but that's not going to be the focus of the film. Then you have implicit, and this means that the ideology is going to be conveyed primarily through characters. So the characters represent opposing ideologies, uh, hero versus villain. Um, the hero represents one thing, the villain represents another thing. But there's little or no discussion within the text of the film, so no real didacticism. And most Hollywood films will fall into this category. So it's a little more hard-hitting than uh, the, the neutral films, um, but it's still not banging you over the head with ideology. Then you have explicit, and this means the story is less important than the social statement. Character's main purpose is to represent ideological archetypes, and propaganda and documentaries are the extreme examples of this. So you have a character, and they're really just there to make think, oh, wow, that character's a fascist. Fascists are bad. Or that character's a communist. Communists are bad. Or something more in the middle of either of those two things. Next, we have ideological expression, character versus technique. So when you're dealing with characters and conveying ideology through them, some of the things to look for, um, since your heroes and protagonists often stand for an ideology the audience can root for, they're usually physically attractive. Um, one thing you might notice is they always have really nice teeth. That's a really common thing there. Um, villains are often unlikable due to minor character flaws, uh, and they're also usually physically unattractive. So you might notice they're kind of dirty or something like that. Um, and they often die while doing something stupid, like gloating or monologuing. So that means that the villain's ideology is something that's untenable, whereas the protagonist, what they stand for is what you should root for. 
technique, so camera style, um, angles, color, framing, uh, mise-en-scene, the composition, character placement, and costume, uh, and editing, um, intellectual montage. Those are all technique uh, ways that can express ideological ideas in both subtle and unsubtle ways. Um, and we've already been talking about this, or at least the agents of the subtext. So ideology can very often be one of those subtextual elements uh, that can be conveyed through the technique. So it's kind of common to what we've already been talking about. And dominant ideology versus the other. So first of all, you have to figure out what is the dominant ideology. It comes from the majority viewpoint of a given culture at a given time. Uh, who's in charge, who used to be in charge, is the former reacting against the latter, and that's going to form your dominant ideology from which your film comes. And then you have the other, which is the opposing or minority viewpoint. So the ideology of a smaller ethnic or religious community within a larger body, that means there's going to be a whole bunch of others, but the main point of the other is it's different from the dominant ideology, and it can, in many cases, seem to be threatening to that dominant ideology. So the voice of the underrepresented and disenfranchised within an oppressive culture. Um, in the U.S., uh, the other is anything other than the ideology of the white male. And the other shifts according to racial, sexual, and religious climates. And this is what ends up creating what some people refer to as the culture wars or uh, identity politics. Uh, and it's very often clashes between the dominant ideology and the other determining which is which. And because of the fluidity of it, it ends up causing um, a lot of confusion and anger. So the film for this week is The Manchurian Candidate. It's from 1962 directed by John Frankenheimer and written by George Axelrod. So our synopsis, a Korean war hero suffers from mental lapses and political scheming by his mother and idiotic senator stepfather. And this was affected greatly by the political climate of the time. Uh, the Cold War, there's definitely part of that in here, the Red Scare, McCarthyism, all of these things are explicitly dealt with in the film. Uh, it's explicitly an espionage thriller but implicitly a critique of competing ideologies and institutions. So this is a very ideologically driven film. And it was remade in 2004 to accommodate different ideological agendas. Um, so evil big business, um, analogous to Halliburton. I don't recommend watching the 2004 remake of this film. Um, it doesn't quite get the job done. So the original version is strangely relevant today. Um, can anybody tell me why? It should be pretty obvious, at least with what's been happening in the past few years um, and, and dealing specifically with our uh, particular presidential administration. So our questions for this week. Number one, what ideologies are explicitly compared in this film? Number two, what opposing viewpoints do Marco and Shaw represent? Where do the Iceland's ideologies fall on the ideological spectrum? That's going to be a challenge for you, I think. Number three, what filmmaking techniques are used to express the ideologies of the characters in the film as a whole? Framing, angles, editing, etc. So I want you to look for ways that they try to convey the um, ideology and um, put that through the technique. Number four, what symbols, motifs, metaphors, and themes do you notice? So playing on what we were talking about um, last week, um, look for some of these things in this film, and I can tell you it's absolutely chock full of them, and they're going to be loaded with ideology. So enjoy this film, and I will talk to you folks next week.